Oh. Hey, I know what happened. Discord and Zoom are trying to share the camera. Only one yeah. device can have the camera. The, yeah, Discord Steve and I had figured it. that out like five minutes ago. You know, we were just waiting for you to figure that out. <laughs> Primarily critical of movies at an after party, this would be it. If you have not seen this film, we suggest that you do so before watching any further. Because we've got trivia, uh, spoilers, and opinions like crazy, and we cannot wait to share them. Good, bad, new, weird, or gross. We will pass judgment on them all. Today! It all starts with a donut, ladies and gentlemen. It all starts with a donut. My Don name is Steve. I'm here with Phil and John. All right. A donut? Explain. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, towards the end of the movie, uh, the, the the dude who's playing um, Frank, uh, his the actor's name is Hugh Jackman. Yes. Uh, he <laughs> <laughs> he. Uh, he says that it all started the the fraud. It all started when uh, when he accidentally paid for a donut with his with his work visa. Oh yes, yeah. yes. And yes, that just yes, led. Yes. And and then, a he, more, and then he a little bit more. He quickly realized that nobody cared. <laughs> nobody gave a shit. And so uh, he was like, "Well, okay, what else can I do?" And then what else can I do? And that turned into millions of dollars, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I millions, millions of dollars. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 mil million dollars, I think at the end of it all. Yeah, at the end of 11 million dollars was uh, yeah. Involving like a few a, a few people were in on it, like yeah. Wow. And I don't. What, what's the duration of uh, the the embez, embezzlement uh, or going on for? Because that's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that one. Um, it's a true it's a true story, as 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 it's based on a true story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, up until I saw this movie, I had no idea. No idea. Never even heard of. Yeah. This. Do you think this is this movie was a cautionary tale for other superintendents that are going, holy crap, we better get our act together because we're doing the exact same shit. Or well, it, it, this could go for a oh, lot. Oh yeah, 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 not yeah. A problem. yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's not just it's not just education. It could go for a lot of different avenues yeah. of uh, people. What gets me and it pisses any should p piss anybody off is people in positions of power. Or, or in charge of the money, in charge of the money in business, in government, uh, you you name it, and they abuse their powers and embezzle money, and, and that should piss off anybody. And absolutely, absolutely, in our society, yeah. and these people what? got away with some serious. <sighs> What's interesting, though, is that what I find interesting with this is that the guy taking all this money, uh, they somehow seem to, at least the film portrayed this, as that the school was on the up and up and up, is that he's been making this school into something amazing. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's taking all the funding away into his own pocket and lying their own pockets, but somehow he's still managing to make this school great. And that's what probably covered for the... Uh embezzlement in the background uh, i think at, at in his heart or at his you know he was a decent guy trying to really they they made a, a lot of uh, effort to to show him really caring about the student and the the parents and the education they, yeah. they showed that throughout the movie that wasn't the issue I, I i think he was a good guy in that sense in that sense i don't know but he also seemed to be a, extremely oh. arrogant and oh. self very uh, vain, very vain, very and, vain. Yes, yeah. extremely vain. But, but uh, he he did his job well, I guess, well enough to carry on the charade and the cover up. And and I think he was a sociopath. When she passed that note, I think he was a total sociopath. He knew how to put do the act. It was all an act to him, though. I don't think he connected with any one of those students. I don't oh, think he connected with anyone. He no, don't? because he, this is no, oh. because this is a guy 
that was lying to his lover is he's he's i mean he's lying to pretty much everyone in his life he's a manipulator right he doesn't really care about people's real emotions right he's just playing a game with everybody including the guy he lives with or his lover that is his partner for years and years he has a story about a wife that never existed right i mean this is a yeah. guy that just loves to manipulate people i don't think he's a good person at all i think he's just an actor he's a he's a psychopath he's a sociopath that's what i think he is really really uh, my you, you have yeah. a you have a certain venom with this guy um i i, I well, saw him i saw him uh He's kind of two sided for me. I mean, he's he he. I think he cared about the students. I think he wanted to make sure that he remembered everybody's name, where where they were going, where they were coming from, who their siblings were, what they wanted out of life, and and I think he 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 actually cared. Um, and I, I got that impression. But also, I I think he uh, he truly had no concept of. Uh, of uh, money that's, you know how people work really hard to figure out what they can write off for taxes and what they can't. And yes. it's, it's just kind of like that on steroids. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, this, okay. this guy's like, he's flying first class. You know, he's probably ordering drinks and food on his, on his flights and he's putting yeah. it all on the business credit card. And he's like, well, this is a business trip. And, and, and well, he didn't have to fly first class. He didn't have to order the most expensive drink. And then and he didn't have to have his suits pressed in order to look certain ways. Well, you, you think about it this way. He had to do a super job masquerading for, for the fact that they're stealing all this money and and but at the same time giving uh great education to the the people uh, yeah. throughout the movie you see like the people that lived in the district uh were living in wealthy people i mean the money was there everybody seemed happy right everything yeah. was seemed glorious in the throughout the movie to till the shit hit the fan and the shit hit the fan at the end yeah of course. Yeah, you remember when he said they, they were asking him what what flight what what airport do you want to leave from? And one of the, his assistants said that which airport do you want to leave from? And he says, well, whichever one's cheaper. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is when we thought that the the lady was the bad guy. Yeah, did, did you guys notice that uh, he drove around like a old beater, not old, but an older style Mercedes Benz or something in the movie, trying maybe trying to act as if. He's not wealthy. He's he's getting yeah. by. He's, he's hiding that? the. He's trying to hide, but we didn't know about this for for the first half of the movie. We believed, right, until yeah, we started yeah. seeing pieces of what he's really up to, and it was all exposed by that uh, student. Uh, she she was told by him to hey go for it, be a journalist. Be bold. Go out there and find the story. Ask the questions. Yeah, <laughs> she well, did. There's a, but there's an interesting chain of events because, she, yeah, she, the student exposes him uh, more so than she got exposed because her idiot son goes around to all to buy all for the home improvement. Yeah, uh, using the credit and they they bring up that somehow this gets back to them going like, hey, this guy shouldn't be out there. Yeah, I mean, he looks like a young it moron. With a school credit card, going around buying all this stuff, oh, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's when everybody starts to pay attention because they have to be accountable. Like, oh, well, what? And, and they... this, this comes to his psychopath part, his, okay. his, his sociopath, is that so he gets caught. This she, this gets caught, but he realizes, wait a second, this is only about her son going to this. And, and, and even though he knows, he knows he's doing eight hundred thousand dollars a year to have a, this place that this l beautiful apartment, he knows yeah. that. But then he just takes a just totally straight faced, totally calm, pins it all on her, and says, "You're you got to resign. He's got a plan and all this stuff." Only a sociopath can do that because a normal person goes, "Holy crap!" Like if um, she's caught, I'm caught, right? Nobody thinks that like. Oh, I can just 
you know, calmly deal with this and pin it all on her when he knows damn well she knows she could turn around and point the finger at him too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. you know what? I, I I agree with that point in the movie. Well, where's the development of her having her side of the story? There wasn't. She kind of just went away, right? Yeah. She was just like a fall pr- guy, fall guy for the, the the fall guy. Yeah. And and oh, I man. agree. He he basically he tried to get away. He's trying to you know cover and buy time. The shit. The you know like. And he no, appoints. It's so, he points that guy to be the auditor, and the guy yeah. does a really good job. Of it. <laughs> it's so interesting that they, uh, the way they play the first half of the movie, because he goes to Vegas and um, and he goes there with two of his colleagues, and he's in the seminar listening to the lectures, and he looks at his two seats beside him, and, right. his, and his buddies are off doing crap, right, whatever, in Vegas, and uh, and he's there And you think notes. he's the good guy. He's, he's well, the good yeah. guy, right? Yeah. yeah. And then he, he For goes the first and... half the movie, yeah, you're buying that he's a decent guy. Yeah. And yeah. I think John's right. The more I, I hear what John's saying about this movie, I agree. He is a psychopath. He, he was a vain guy that Needed, needed to get caught uh, until he would keep piling bullshit on until he got caught. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, and even even at the beginning of the movie, they show him like he almost like he's like a, he looks at himself like a rock star or superintendent. Like they get he's walking down like he's going into a boxing match, right? And then and then he comes on stage like he's like this like messiah or whatever. There, like he, you know, it, it's like everyone's screaming for him or whatever. It's, it's like you could tell this guy's living in this this fantasy of like he's like the superstar of superintendents you know and yeah it's, it's a little it's a little weird for an educator yeah. like that's not how you, you typically look at educators right well i don't know americans are different than canadians and the, the, uh, in certain ways the weight of education in america is so powerful like you got to be in the right school yeah. you gotta uh, all that bullshit the right college and ah. now, now um this this was like a huge scandal like years ago did, did anybody get the impression that uh, uh big bob spicer the guy that's played by ray romano um did anybody get the impression that he was also embezzling because at the end of the movie they say Oh, uh, Frank was. Uh, I didn't. I got. The, I got the impression he was. He was straight edge. Okay, okay. I, I I couldn't quite put a pin on it, but at the end of the movie, they say Frank was embezzling this much, and um, and uh, what was his name? Pam was embezzling that much, and well, eleven eleven million, million dollars was right. So I had my wife and I had this discussion. So they say two point two million was uh, give uh, Frank had. And four point three was hers, which gives you only a total of six point uh, uh, five, right? Okay. Yeah. So you're you're right. You're missing five million, almost five million dollars there, right? Four and a half million dollars. But one could say that they could never figure out which they could only allot that much to prove that Frank was responsible for two point two. She is responsible for four point three. Three, there could have been stuff they just couldn't prove. They just know the money was missing. Yeah, and they couldn't allot it to her, and they couldn't allot it to him. They just knew that one, probably one of those two, took it. They just can't prove it. Exactly. It's it all comes down to like uh, the court case and like proving things. Uh, who knows? It's crazy that they just did whatever they wanted, and it really took like. Uh, the stupid son-in-law or whatever, who the guy went out and to yeah. get things caught, and like I, I, the duration of it, and oh wow, well, yeah, it's 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 always the money, it's always the money. I mean, how did Al Capone get caught, right? Oh yeah, I, uh, taxes, right? I'm yeah, sure. yeah, it's Not always a- it's always there's always a trail of money. Whenever uh, it comes to money, somebody's got a ledger, right? Uh, and uh, I think I'm pretty sure that's how Donald Trump's going to go down. But <laughs> probably. Yeah. So, okay. On that on that note, did you think the scene where um, I think they were in uh, Vegas and he's in the car with the uh, 
the new boyfriend, Carl. Carl. Yeah. <laughs> and and all of a sudden the, the the police like crash in on them and they drag him on the car and they throw him down. And he's like it's for it's, He's just like a ta- he's just stealing money. It's not like he's got guns or narcotics or, or he's he's a thug. It seemed excessive. Yeah, it was a little aggressive. Yeah, it was like a, a little dramatic for the situation. But he wasn't doing what they said. Oh, he oh, wasn't, wasn't, he wasn't Carl. complying. Chad, he wasn't complying, right? But it, it seemed like over the. I don't know if that happened in the real life, but that seemed like over dramatic to me. That one. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I get you. Um, I thought uh, they were going to. Uh, I thought they were going to play up the uh, janitor. The janitor. Yeah, we kiss. No, no, I don't know. I, I, I notice these little things and I get obsessed with them. And I don't, I don't think it panned out in this case. <laughs> yeah, but he the, knows she was there late that night. That, yeah, like, she knew. He knew she was there late that night. Um, he was the first person in the movie because. Um, in the, in the in the opening scene when they're rolling the credits, they pan through an empty school, this that the other thing, and then suddenly you see the the floor waxer and you right. come up, come out. Yeah. And that was it was another a really good opening, and uh, I I just thought that the janitor was going to play more into it, but he never well, you, did. You kind of thought he might have some inside scoop that might come to, into play. You're right, but uh, no, never, no. never manifested. No, I guess not. <laughs> there you go. So, what about the performances? I thought uh, I thought Hugh Jackman did amazing. I thought the, actually the acting was all really good. I thought yeah. everyone played their parts um, very well. I, I like what you, had, what you had to say, John. You were uh, exposed to uh, uh, Hugh Jackman's acting from movie Forty Three. Three, yeah, yeah. It, from the it wasn't the all- first thing I've seen him in. I, really? I just it just. No, it wasn't the first thing I saw him in, but uh, you know, yeah, it, it reminded me of him, and I thought, oh, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while, but yeah, yeah, oh. the, the seeing, seeing the testicles on his uh, neck there was quite something, and and it's it, it doesn't leave your head quickly. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I I agree. I really like Hugh Jackman. We we might know him as being Wolverine for many movies in the uh, X Men series, right? Uh, and, but. His commitment to the roles, like being like doing a role where it, like he's got nuts hanging off his chin, and then he does a role like this, uh, where he's a vain psychopath uh, path kind of character. Yeah, uh, I enjoy his movie choices, and uh, this was great. Uh, this is good. I enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I did too. I, did too. Uh, I think overall the acting was pretty spot on. Like it's cool to see um, Ray Romano, right? You, you said, yeah. That was neat. Well, I, 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 after seeing Paddleton, I'm pretty yes. sure Ray Romano can do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty. Uh, impressed I think with that I, guy. I, I, I wrote that guy off. I did not enjoy. Everybody loves Raymond. That was his yeah. show. I'm not a big fan of comedy sitcoms. Oh, I love that sitcom. I, that was did? hilarious. Yes. Oh, well, I, I wasn't. Yeah. I don't know why. I just didn't. Yeah. But okay. No, I know what you mean. He's an acquired taste. Yeah. But um, but I I'm a fan too. Yeah. I, hey, prove me wrong. I I enjoy seeing. I enjoy people doing something outside of their box. Like, oh, I'm a comedian. No, I can do drama too, right? And so on. I can do both. I can. I'm an actor, right? So. Yeah. Well, Ray Romano also he played in a television series. I think it was uh, was it Parenthood. Yeah, it was oh, Parenthood. Uh, and he had he had Aspergers uh, in there, and uh, he did oh, that really uh, well too. Yeah. Oh, I, I seen him in uh, something that HBO did called A Vinyl, which was a a, a, mu- a music movie from the seventies, like a, a a show about the recording industry in the seventies. Awesome! It didn't get picked up for another season, and he is great. And, uh, but yeah. Well, very cool. Did you want to get into this trivia? Sure. Let's do it. All right. The first piece of trivia. The writer, Mike Mikowski, was a middle school student in the Roslyn School District during the events of the film. Hmm. I had no idea. 
Wow. The writer of the movie. Cool. So it okay. was bore witness. He bore witness. One would think wow. one, one would think he's got a very first hand knowledge of the situation. <laughs> Some boots on the ground kind of if yeah. We, yeah. Fair enough. This was big news. I, I do remember this when it went down. This was like if you watched uh, I always think about movies and time periods and what I was what my age was and so on compared to the movie and this was around 2000 because they still had like flip flop phones and they weren't using smartphones and so uh I, uh yeah i mean this is a different time yeah, like 2003 or something like that 2003 yeah yeah i remember that phil did you want to take the next one yeah sure hugh jackman had shaved his head for a different role before filming started, but his hair didn't grow back in time, uh, so he had to wear a wig for filming. Really? Movie. I did not at I did all. Not catch that. I didn't catch, catch that. that at all. I so, did not catch hey, it at all. Good job, uh, hair and wig hair and makeup. Lady. Yeah, hair and makeup <laughs> wig department man. Wig department. <laughs> yeah, he was what making out with that dude too, and they were like running each other's hair through it. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah, I mean, movie movie magic. Movie yeah, magic. there you go. Okay, um, th I, this I, I was just reading a bit. This what I'm about to say, and they said this at the end of the movie, which is just is insane. But anyways, yes. yes. Frank Tisson continues to receive an annual state pension of a whopping one hundred seventy three thousand dollars four hundred ninety five and four cents per year, as four he cents. did while. Yeah, as he did while in prison, which essentially being paid by the taxpayers he stole from. In fact, all of the employees who were caught up in the embezzlement scheme received pensions, including Pamela Glucken, who receives $54,998 annually. Glucken gives half of her pension to the Rosa School District in an effort to pay back what she stole. So, okay, so she's only getting fifty-four. So she's giving uh, twenty six, uh, twenty seven thousand dollars back. Yeah, Frank there is getting one hundred seventy three thousand. Is he giving anything back? See, I'm telling you, sociopath. He's probably giving not even a penny. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I here. The first thing I did after watching the movie is I had to know what is going on with uh, Frank currently, and w uh, what time did he do? Like serve time, and yeah. it turns out. He did four years in prison. He got out for on good behavior. Uh, apparently, he paid back all the money. Uh, his spouse, the the partner, actually went to prison for a few years as well. Uh, the, the woman, uh, sorry, Glucken, she went to prison as well, and she yes was trying to pay back the the, the, the but but I don't know if she did. It turns out she died recently i don't know oh, what really? I, what causes really uh and uh well frank is still alive and doing well apparently well yeah 173 thousand dollars doing very well exactly <laughs> but <laughs> do you think living the, large man <laughs> yeah here here is the big question for you guys and everybody out there do you think the uh the punishment fit the crime hell no no hell no this is oh. the, uh, no this millions guy, of dollars, millions yeah. of dollars, millions of dollars, and he's going to continue to get over the. It, depending how old he lives, he'll have more millions of dollars going into his pocket from the taxpayers. That's right. Think, think okay, about, let me let me say this to you, Phil. If you were gonna if you were gonna make one hundred and fifty grand a year for the rest of your life. If you went to prison for four years, <laughs> did you know that? Did you know that going yet? I well, uh, it, I would go to prison right today for four <laughs> years, and I come out with one hundred fifty grand for the rest of my life. Count me in. It, it, yeah. it's, it, it's it it seems like it really gets you gets you mad, right? It's like it's white collar crimes, right? It's the one yeah. percenters, the one percenters, all that shit. <laughs> All right, it's let like, me get this last piece of trivia out. Sure, yes. The film depicts Frank having an affair in Las Vegas with a former student. 
The real Tassone said uh, that that bends the truth. In real life, Tassone had an open marriage and did not keep the affair a secret from, her, from his husband. Uh, Tassone said he was uh, bothered terribly by the film showing him having an affair with a former student, which never happened. Tassone also took issue with the film implying that his husband was not aware he was previously married to a woman. I didn't catch that part, but um, yeah, Frank has some moral issues with this movie. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I, but that's what happens in movies. They dramatize things. They say it's, oh, they say it's based on a true story, right? Yeah, but they'll yeah. create shit. To make it more interesting, they can create a lot. Yes, and they, yes, they fuck with the truth. They just get the bare bones of the story. It happens well, all the time. True. And I mean, and the real Frank may not be a psychopath. I mean, he might not be uh, a sociopath or anything. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's just a greedy, you know, guy. Uh, I don't know. I, th I, I, I think he's a guy just got away with it as long as he could until the shit hit the fan, and then he got off pretty goddamn easy at the end of it all. Yeah. Right? Too easy, they, way too easy. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no doubt, and it, and and it makes you angry. I I leave this movie thing. I'm feeling angry. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, at least at least she's not in charge of your school district that you're living in yeah. right now. I, I was entertained. I I thought it was well done, but you feel like oh well you well good luck justice system. Good luck. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, like we 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 said right near the beginning of this podcast, you know, they got caught. This is probably going on all over the place. That oh, people that didn't get aren't getting caught, you know. And Imagine so, in, in in countries that are not the democracies and have no system of law, even close to North American standards or European standards. It says fuck you. you just I want fucked. I want to know how many records rooms accidentally caught on fire. After yeah. this movie was released, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, man. no doubt. Yeah. Oh, it, you know, it it, it boggles the mind. Yeah. The, the... yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um. Uh. That was bad education. We are primarily critical. You are awesome. Uh. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh. Next week, Monday at noon. Um. Mike. Mike. Bill, Inc. I picked uh, it. You picked it. Why uh, did you pick it? Without spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. spoilers. Why did you pick it? Uh, you know, we just had uh, Oscar season came and went, and it was like uh, this movie had a lot of buzz about it, and it was on Netflix, and I thought, hey, it's shot in black and white. It's a period piece. What is this all about? So, hey, check it out. Let's talk about it. I can't Not wait, on, man. Can't I wait. can't wait to talk about it. Uh, Woo! Jazz hands. Hopefully Great I'll night. be out of jail by then. But anyway, all right, see you guys. Yeah, later, guys. All right. <laughs>